Hello and welcome to YouTube's favorite comics station, Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. I want to remind everybody about the Cartoonist Kayfabe Patreon that is now live. Three different levels. It'll give you access to our videos early to help you beat and stave off the Kayfabe effect. And if you're a King Kayfaber, you actually sit in on a recording session. So you get all of this stuff first and some uh, fun in-between stuff, some back and forth with the Kayfabe, King Kayfabers out there. We are also working cartoonists, and that's the way we pay the bills. Best way to support us is to buy our books. My recent books include Hulk Grand Design, Plain Janes, and Street Angel Deadliest Girl Alive. And my next book, Street Angel, Princess of Poverty, can be pre-ordered now. It features all of the Street Angel comics that are not in Deadly Girl Alive. So complete your Street Angel collection and pick that one up wherever you buy books. Ed's got a big year coming up, starting with Hip Hop Family Tree, The Omnibus. You can pre-order this one now. It collects all of the Hip Hop Family Tree comics in one handsome 500 plus page collection that includes 140 extra pages of material gold foil on the cover this is going to be a beautiful book so get that pre-order in there now red room the third and final season crypto killers is starting very shortly and pre-orders are due now so subscribe to this at your local comic shop this is your standard ed piscor cover here there are also variant editions the ed piscor variant the peach momoko variant the jim rug by way of rob liefeld variant and the sketch cover for all of the sicko wackos out there can show their uh, pedigree with that one. You can also pick up Ed's other books. Two trade paperbacks of Red Room exist. Three volumes of X-Men Grand Design as well as an oversized omnibus. The original Hip Hop Family Tree oversized issue or books are still out there. And WYSIWYG, if you're lucky, you might still find a copy uh, sitting on a shelf in a good comic shop somewhere. So, today we are going to investigate and try to get to the bottom of a mystery. And that mystery is... Sam Keith did a story in Mr. Monster Attacks Number 2, published by Tundra back in the day. Love Sam Keith's work. I am baffled by the artwork in this issue. I, I purposely... Well, first off, these are hard comics to find. Uh, fair. I got... Is this issue 2? Issue 2. Okay, I got issue 1 uh, this during the Eid sale, but I don't have this one, can't find it. Uh, I haven't looked in this, so I'm actually excited Wait till you see it. I'm glad. I'm glad that you're coming in fresh because I picked this up uh, for, you know, like you say, they're hard to find. I found a copy somewhere, grabbed it, super excited. Love it. Tundra, Mr. Monster. It all adds up to cool stuff. And I open it up and Sam Keith is in this pool position spot. Guys, this is Sam Keith artwork. Wow. I don't know what this is. There are marks. None of these marks, I, I, I could painstakingly recreate them. I don't know. This is not tool based. I can't no. tell you what it is. And the real mystery as we go through this is you're going to see panels that look like regular Sam Keith art next to this stuff. This reminds me a little bit of photocopies. Sometimes if you blow up and shrink and blow up and shrink photocopies, yeah. you'll get this kind of weird patterns will kind of emerge. Yeah. Um, I don't know why that would have been done here. I just don't know what I'm looking at. Yeah. So, so like we have clues, right? And the clues will be in the lettering. And the clues will be, like, you see the fidelity of the lines there. You see the fidelity of the lines here. Uh, it's Ken Brusnack. He's not a computer letterer. So if I had to guess, like, I had a uh, fax machine. And the fax machine Xeroxes, when you would, like, blow something up, the fidelity was this shit. It, it was the, these exact daubs. I recognize these. The fax machine is it. It never occurred to me. And as soon as you say it, that, that kind of dings. But yeah, wow, is there a different story behind this? Like, why I'm would very curious. somebody, you know, Sam Keith, the meticulous artist, I can't imagine he's signing off on this. Like, this is the nightmare stuff if you're an artist. Yeah. Unless you had some weird vision in mind of like, I'm going to do art that doesn't look like any other art you've ever seen. Because look, this is a much tighter rendering. So how do you get this? in the middle of this. Right. And, and you have some of that effects on this page. So yeah. it's not like, oh, this page worked. Yeah, I think I think I think it's this is like paste up. I think somebody is on independently of the original art putting zips down, Bresnik's doing his thing. You see those thin lines, like this might be an original drawing. This to me looks like you've got one figure and you photocopied it and right. changed its size. Right. Because the medium-sized figures are the same. They're real similar. And the smaller ones, same deal. And it's like you've got four sizes of, of that figure. 
scattered across here. I don't know what's going on. We're gonna have to ask uh, Eastman, man. Keep this keep this handy for for next time we we connect with him because because like I'm curious, but like I'll go further. This character right here, that's this copy alien paster. zombie, throughout, and it's like copy pasted, rotated, but run you know consistently throughout here. Like pieces are coming in that are then being applied. Yeah, yeah. I I think it's and and uh, count the little ticks. And is it the same there? Like, is this the same head? It looks like it. It right? does look like it. And you'll see like her face drawn on top of whatever this is. Like these fine lines and her you know wrinkles in her shirt, the eyebrows and stuff, the lips, the n- nostril, all different marks than everything around here. So this appears to be pasted on top. Yeah. I would bet that maybe some of this is original, like, or maybe this, even this image is man. But, but I, I do think that this is, this is fax machine black. I think you're right. I think you're right. It explains certain parts. doesn't explain all of it, but yeah. explains certain parts. You know, like if you look at the Mr. Monster here, these lines are finer than like these lines. You know what? This is, this is Kevin Eastman marks. Kevin Eastman's hand is on that. I bet you. We'll show this to him, but I bet you Kevin Eastman put these exact lines right there. Was I lying whenever I said this is about the most bizarre artwork in a comic? Yeah, totally. And it's like, is it intentional? Like, are you trying something? Do you like the way that that fax machine looks and uh, you want to see what that looks like? You know, it's a it's a weird period in time with the, with the uh, Frank Miller... Sincidious kind of stuff. And I remember as a kid fucking with that fax machine and saying like, oh man, it looks like uh, Frank Miller because like so many lines drop off mm-hmm. and you get these stark blacks and things. So I wonder if, you know, he's just trying something. It's like a zine. It's like zine art. It's out there. It, it does make me wonder like what the deal is because... But then what know, do the originals look like? Because they're, they're, they're probably like beautifully done, you know, with beautiful Sam Keith feathering. That's true too. And maybe somebody watching this video has seen some of these originals. Maybe they're out there. I didn't go digging online, but it's possible they exist. It's possible that this was sent in via fax and then in shipping, the art was just gone. Ooh, and it right. wouldn't fit time-wise to like do anything for it. And uh, they did the best they could, which... Shocking. This is your lead-off story. Too, yeah, yeah, you, know you what bury I mean? something like, like this. I just don't know what the heck this is. I'm kind of glad it exists because we look at a lot of different shit and I haven't seen anything that looks like this. But peculiar on a scale that, you know, if you told me Sam Keith this issue of Mr. Monster, I'd be like, great, I love Sam <laughs> Keith. Right. I'd be beside myself if I went into it with that. It looks very golden age there, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's um, it's the height of weirdness. Yeah, there's a pixelation, like it's a, it's just Dobby pixelation to to the stuff, man. So I mostly wanted to just see what comes back. Yeah, you know, Tundra it's was great. known for production values too, which is part of the oddness of this piece getting in here. You know, they've got their own print house, they've got all the, they're about as cutting edge production wise as you could get at this point in in the in American comics. So to produce this. It does. I'm, I'm eager to ask Kevin Eastman if he remembers this, because I bet you he does. Just go through some of the rest of the issue. Yeah, you can see. Super sharp, normal oh, uh, Yeah, no, it's no question. I, th- I, I feel like I know the, what that is. I just want to see what some of the other stuff is. You know, the, the um, idea of filling in that fax machine part really kind of plugs some gaps. Yeah. I like the Mr. Monsters that I've picked up because they'll have this kind of stuff. We looked at one where it was Mr. Monster and Godzilla, Ken... Rosnick and uh, Michael T. Gilbert really collaborated on it. It's like a two-color process. We have a video of it. You can really see, like, they're playing around um, in a way that I think is exciting and in a way that most people weren't. Boy, there's not a lot in this issue. No, right? it's, it's a lot of... I'm lot surprised of, by the five, uh, five, five pages of, of letters columns in here. And, and you know, that's the unfortunate thing that's, that's done. Like, this character, I think, could have been a big character, but... Uh, it's spread out so far and you don't always get Michael T. Gilbert stuff. Like, uh, it was mismanaged because it's such a cool costume. And, and if you, if you pump the brakes and like really think about it and try to build something, I think you could make something great, but he did, um, he would reprint like public domain stuff. That's a pretty nice piece. Yeah. He would reprint public domain comics. Oh my goodness. This was a uh, teacher at the Kubert school, Brian really? Buniak. Yeah. He, he, he taught humor. <laughs> it's not a very humorous piece, but he was a great caricature. I, I love the image though. I think it looks really good, but he would do um, like public domain team up with Bernie Wrights in here for uh, another Stern character. Um, some of my first like uh, reprints of golden age comics would be yeah. out of those things. So it is. I, I don't know the story. I, I think I've met Michael T. Gilbert very briefly in passing at a show. I'd be curious to know a little bit more than I do. Let's celebrate Sam Keith a Let's little bit. Let's do that. Got some proto works. I had these pulled for the longest, and it's like, how do I? How do we 
get them on the channel and with such a great thumbnail and, and video title as we have the no better time man so this is from 82 primer five Ooh, man that's got to be his first published work might right? be uh and there's a lot there's a lot to this so this is max the hair here's the hair he's a mercenary uh don't you see cancor like some matt allison uh energy in this i do yeah just go through check check that thing out this the story's pretty slight but the art is is all there that's really interesting that that Max yeah. character. There's there's characters named Max in both stories we'll be looking at, which is a fascinating is. little piece. Knowing that where, where he where he goes, I like this cartoon. I like this page. Yeah, you little can, tiny glimpses. If you know CMT totally. well, you can see little tiny glimpses. Yeah, still but not a lot. Still deep in the uh, Bernie Wrights and the lighting. Yeah, school. So uh, I suggest like yeah, take it's another a really look. nice. Uh, yeah, there's there's moments of real promise. You can see how an editor probably saw some of this work and was like, "Bring it on!" Great, great lighting. Well, that, well, that's that's a quick conversation I want to have while, while we go through this. Uh, you know, we're almost wrapping up the the Sam Keith part, but I would ask that you uh, just look through the whole issue when when it's done. And uh, there's there's this like conversation that comes up every now and then. Uh, your 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 wife has brought it up. Sometimes when when we have like a group at your house and we're going through something and everybody's emoting at the same thing, uh, so this is the end of the story. Pretty cool. If you just like look through everything, real page quick. layout. Yeah. You know, again, like thinking Sam yeah. Keith isms. The uh, I was thinking in terms of like sports scouts, you know, like a basketball recruiter or something like this, and and I don't know what they see in all these high school kids that really outshines, uh, you know, like which makes this kid you know, uh, viable to get a scholarship for your school or something. Man, I've never thought about scouting sports that way. But, and that's real interesting. Cause it'd be like a move. You'd be like, that dude has size, but then he did this one thing. I don't it'd be like something you'd see real depth in the drawing where you're like, there's figure work. That's the, that's what I have looking at this stuff because like, there's a story up front too. And like, none of these guys are terrible, you know, like this, Already, we're getting people influenced by fucking Matt Wagner. Already, you know, uh, Grendel's pr Primer Three. Love I that think. sequence. There are highlights in all these stories, but the standout, if I'm going to recruit them on my team, is going to be Sam Keith. And it's like, so we have that eye for our craft in the same way that like a talent scout would in some other medium, do music, you, is, whatever, uh, A and R. Do you think it's clear that Keith is uh, head and shoulders above this? collection i do yeah i do all this stuff feels way more raw but then, back to that first but then judith hunt is dope you know yeah boy and you can see how wagner would have been like a like a standout of this he, you're not marvel with dc grew. yeah yeah definitely but you know like to me this is very striking compared to what we've just flipped through yeah you can see how that'd be a hero for like the uh emerging indie do yeah. your own stuff kind of crew yeah i'll tell you what do we always complain about with people? Put your name on this stuff. Right. You know what I mean? Like, you want to be discovered, and yet I can't tell you who drew this. Right. But you see, pretty pretty boilerplate, you know, the kind of stuff that you would get in any kind of Eternity comic uh, yeah. from, from that pre-image period. But, the, but then you get to this. Now, is that not the standout? I mean, of course. Yeah, it's definitely... The, the thing that I pull from this is the unique voice. Because it feels like this stuff, like you say, it could be an eternity yeah. issue. This doesn't feel like that. This right. feels like something odd is going on in here. There's just stuff with the drawing, too. Like, he, he understands form and lighting, and he's 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 just got to grow. But this is oh, 82. that's early. Wow. And this is uh, 86, 87. He did the cover, mm -hmm. 86. 86, yeah, that magical year. And Not him on the back cover. Correct. It's an anthology. He has, okay. the, he has the lead-off story. And this character, who's about to flop into the private investigators noir like uh office is uh his, his name's mad max i wonder if he's doing lettering and everything that's a good question because this is good like um ben urich uh yeah joe rosen or whoever fucking frank miller lettering classic kind of like storytelling too we see the private eye mm -hmm. see you know we see what it's it's uh it's pretty solid but i mean three or four years right, right have have uh progressed yeah Still with the page layouts, still with the heavy... Some of this weird sh shapes and things feels like something we would continue to see. Care catcher of these faces and stuff, like the cartooniness of that. Yeah. Something yeah. That I really like. Oh, yeah. Go to the front cover of this thing. I showed it to you. Yes, like, uh, look, there's an is right there on that cover. Weird. Yeah. 
That guy looks like it can be a wrestling comic. Mm-hmm. That horse face, like the the shapes of these PI. Yeah. Bad hair. Not iconic. No. Cobblestone roads. He has all good the, textures. All the uh, the shadows to the spotting of the blacks pretty well done. Yeah. Throughout. Still no uh, letterer on the thing, so maybe it is him swinging the aims. Yeah, not clear on your uh, credit breakdowns, if there are layouts or anything involved. And there's your big guy. This is about the hat that you're going to get on Mr. Hyde and the Incredible Hulk. You're right, issue. yeah. Yeah, kind of a Solomon Kane gimmick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very worn, that hat. Like, I mean, it's right out of that issue. Or right into that issue, maybe out of this one. That could even be like your uh, your Hulk. Your Hulk uh, <laughs> and it's weird too to think like this is a story that you're going to put a big effort into, and it gets published in front of people. You know, like I'm doing a bunch of short stories right now, and this feels so removed. Like in my mind, it's like I've got to be interested in this subject and this character design and all these elements. It feels like there's nothing in this story that I'm too interested in. It's a detective story. That's kind of fun, but. You know, it's just, it's weird. Like, I don't know how it fits in comics at that time. Yeah. Yeah, and just give a glance to some of the other stuff, because once again, I think the art does stand out so much. Ron Lim. Yeah. Kind of neat to see another pro, another future pro, working his way through this system. We're going to see another one on the next page right here, man. I think this uh, Kelly Jones. Kelly Jones. Um, I believe I have this. Oh, yeah, that's an easy one to get. And uh, it's interesting because it's really hard to see Kelly Jones in it. Like, sure. like what Kelly Jones become changes a lot. Like that's much more of a, you know, I don't want to say generic superhero because it's pretty well done. Yeah. But stylistically very far removed from what I think of as Kelly Jones. Yeah. Pretty new Adams ish compared to like the rights and place he goes. Yeah, this is this is funny. It's it's pretty boilerplate. It's nothing, um, nothing special. Boring in so many like this is the stuff that I think of as boring because nothing is wrong with it. But also I don't find it exciting. But it does feel like you're aspiring to uh, work your way towards that Marvel DC house style. Which was the move. Like, the, the, these, there were these opportunities that, you know, you're not cut out for Marvel yet, but put in some work and you could get your own Man Bat comic. I like the shading on this figure here. That, that's kind of neat. Yeah, it's interesting. Like, it would never get your Marvel work. Lavender Lace. Oh, Ron Lim. Yeah. And Kelly Jones on the inks. <laughs> wow, that's a cool piece. You know, I'm a... As a f fan of cartooning, as a fan of artists, like when I'm going through the quarter bins, I'm looking for if, if I, I if I find the early artwork of somebody I did, yeah, like I, I, I scoop it up. If I if I told you Todd McFarlane, yeah, yeah, wouldn't that you take that? Hair? that? Totally. And of course, Dave Campiti gets his copyright in on there because I'm sure he pulled a lot of weight on uh, fashioning that comic. Another one of those like Eclipse, Lunatic Fringe, or uh, Eternity type, <laughs> boring. You know, wow. they, they could draw this stuff in the right place, but just lacks dynamics. I love it's Ronald Reagan uh, calling the lunatic fringe. We've got a problem. <laughs> wow. And then, uh, yeah. So, it is neat to see. Uh, I, I didn't realize. I was thinking this was all Sam Keith because no, I've seen yeah. this cover before. Um, and, and shortly after this, he does a book at Fanographics, and I think it is all Sam Keith, so I wish I would have pulled it, but maybe a future issue, maybe a bonus issue or something like that. Uh, but cool to see his evolution, and I wonder, like, what's between these? Yeah. How old is he when he's doing this? Right. Is he, like, 15 whenever he's doing that? <laughs> I mean, you know, legit. Sure, yeah, yeah, probably got to be pretty young. Uh, you know, how cool was it, right, that there were these, like, places to publish a lot of places to publish, a lot of anthologies out there. Um, there is a sexiness to a, to a physical print yeah. publication, but I do want to put the word out to people like, you don't need this now. Like your Instagram, you could build an amazing audience digitally. And then a small portion of them will support your printed works. So these have phased out. You don't need these anymore to get over and to, uh, see how the, the, the world responds to your work, but in an age before the internet, how beautiful that these kind of things existed because unfortunately you and I kind of came up when the anthologies were going away and there was no real social media. You know, we still have websites. My website is rooted in 2003. If you go look at that goddamn thing, man. <laughs> uh, so, you know, these had their place and, uh, 
Yeah, give us any feedback on this uh, Mr. Monster joint. I'm gonna take, yeah, this is gonna, the Mr. Monster mystery right here. I'm, I'm gonna take some snaps of this before we go. Don't let me forget, and I'm gonna text that to to Eastman and and yeah. just see like what the heck, man. See is what this, comes up. Is this facts? I'm telling you, dude. The facts, the facts machine thing filled in a bunch of gaps for me. And you combine that with the idea, like maybe that artwork was lost, and I feel like we might have uh, deduced what happened. You know here. what? You know what? Here's here's I, I'm just it's all coming to mind, and I could I could produce results like I do afterward. Uh, the reason I know what that warble is is because when I discovered that you weren't drawing the Spider Man logo on every issue, you know what I mean? Uh, I had my own comics, and I designed a logo. And I'm like, oh, I'm gonna draw some more covers. So I'm, I'm copy it, like I'm making black prints on my mom's fax of like my comic cover uh, cover logos. Yeah. And it would have that exact warble whenever there was like not a perfect. Whenever that ink line bleeds, it picks it up in like, like you know, like when you set your stroke, it picks up in a big stroke, uh, as in Photoshop lingo. Yeah, well... 10 pixels, 50 pixels. Keep us posted on uh, what Eastman comes back with. Good to go? I am. Kayfabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. King Kayfabers, uh, mitigate the Kayfabe effect by getting these videos before anybody else. And they can hang out with us while we uh, record these vids. But the videos are brought to you by the books that we make. And uh, coming soon on the stands, I have Red Room Crypto Killers. Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game. That's the cover to uh, issue number one. Going to be coming out on a monthly basis starting in May. Uh, various flavors of that. There's a sketch cover that you may have been able to get. Uh, we are in the process of printing those right now as of this recording. Jimmy's uh, variant, Peach's variant, and I have a variant in there as well. Uh, two volumes of Hip Hop Family, tr um, two volumes of Red Room Trade Paperbacks are out there in the wild. Uh, at the end of this year, we're going to be putting out the Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus. 500 plus pages with 140 pages of uh, material that is not in the uh, original four treasury editions of Hip Hop Family Tree. We're going all out. Beautiful gold foil is going to be on there. Maybe a little emboss, deboss. We're making this a sexy, se sexy book. Going to be the size of a phone book. And is going to weigh, uh, you know, 20 pounds or something. <laughs> uh, there are three volumes of X-Men Grand Design out there and WYSIWYG. Jimmy, what are your books? Next one you guys need to order to support, Street Angel, Princess of Poverty, coming out later this spring from Image Comics. This is going to collect all of the Street Angel comics that are not featured in Deadly Scroll Live. It'll complete your Street Angel collection. So let everybody know you want a copy. Get that thing ordered now. Other books from me that have come out recently, Hulk Grand Design, the oversized treasury edi edition, fluorescent green cover. You cannot miss it. Pick it up while supplies last because it takes a while to reprint. Uh, Street Angel Deadly Scroll Live and The Plain Jane is also available. And you can join me on patreon.com slash Jim Rugg where I've started serializing my latest comic on there. Uh, first installment just went up. So check it out. I ask you, Jimmy, what else do we have going on though? Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts, merchandise, mugs, stickers, fanny packs, and more at our spread shop. That link is also under this video. Oh, great ways to support the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. Give them those marching orders and we'll be on our way. Read more comics.